Well, we've had a lot of hot days in California, a lot of fires, ongoing fires, very smoky. So I came out one morning to use my official Radio Shack volt ohm meter that I've had for many, many years. It's been very trusty, works fantastic. A little beat up, but it still works. But look, when I went to power it on, nothing. All this battery corroded here. So I don't know if the battery blew up or if it's just leaking or what, but it does not power up anymore. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take it apart and hopefully it didn't wreck the meter. Now this could be a somewhat long video or it could be a quick video, but I thought I would just show this to you. I haven't cracked this thing open yet. So that's what we're gonna do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the test leads off of here first. Get those out of the way here. And I'll move these out of the way. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to open the uh, battery compartment here. Oh boy, that is really stuck on our good. Oh boy, this is really on there. That normally just slides right off. Oh boy, what a mess. Well, you can see right there, we have a big mess in there. And this takes the AA battery. So let's uh, get these out of here and assess the damage here. Get something here to pry them out here with. Normally these just come right out. There's a fuse in here too. Those look to be uh, still in there. Wow, that thing is really stuck. Whoa, that thing is really stuck in there. Well, this is what you call a battery bomb. It went off in there. And we'll get this one out. That doesn't look too bad. It looks like this one here was the uh, main culprit here. So there we are. So you can see the Contacts are rather uh, corroded up there. We're gonna clean those, and we're gonna clean the inside of this case. Uh, these look actually okay, these contacts here, but these on the other hand are pretty bad. So let's clean these up and see if we can get this guy working. Now it doesn't look like the uh, corrosion has gotten any further in here. It's just kind of confined here, because last time I used this was actually about a month ago. So between a month ago and it gets very, very hot out in my garage here. And I always keep the door open because of uh, Betty Cat. She lives in the garage here. She does come in the house once in a while, but she likes out here in the garage. And she stays outside most of the time. She came with the house. So uh, she's kind of set in her ways, but she's very lovey. But anyway, getting back to this. Um, and then the fuses. We'll have to check those to make sure these are still good too because there's little things right here. I don't have any replacement fuses of that type either. So let's clean it up. So the best thing to get battery corrosion off with is uh, I'm going to go get a couple things and I'll be right back. So we got a few things here to work on this here. So what we're going to do first is uh, we will clean this uh, battery cover door here. And uh, we're just going to use a little electric toothbrush on it here to get that stuff off of there. And maybe use just a little warm water. Get all the corners cleaned off of it here. that cleaned up real good. Let me just dry that off of there. All right, so that looks like new again. That looks good. Let's make sure we got everything off of it here. 
Now hopefully this didn't get into the uh, circuit board or anything like that. I, it doesn't look like it did. It just looks like it just kind of just started leaking actually. So I'm very thankful for that. All right, so now let's uh, <clears throat> do the important part here. So we will start working on the meter here. Electric, use electric toothbrush and stuff like this because it just makes it so much easier. You just let it do all the work. And I turned upside down so the water doesn't go inside of here. Now we'll do the other side here. This is the worst side here. All right, let's get that out of our way. Let me uh, wipe this out here a little bit dry here and see what else we need to do and we'll just get a little water on here and get a few little spots on the case here that I missed we certainly don't want to be uh, putting this dried electrolyte back into the dried electrolytic acid or whatever you want to call it but, uh, yeah it's been pretty good now you can see I'll get this up here I'm getting the light just right maybe but right here uh, you can see that's where it got kind of pitted there. So that's the one that leaked. That's the one that uh, I took out. That's the one that was corroded the worst. That was on the uh, negative terminal. Uh, the others look brand new. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to uh, clean this just a little bit more here. I just use a little isopropyl on here just to kind of finish it off here. on it here. And there's just a few little spots uh, that we missed here. We'll get them all off of here. So it looks nice and pretty again. So what we're going to do, we're going to go get some batteries and we're going to need two AA batteries and we will see if it works. All right, so we got some batteries here, some brand new ones. So we will put them in here and we will see what happens. Hopefully it works. Let's see what we got here. Oh, look at that. It's good. It's powered up. Great. All right, let's see. Yep. The BPD beep works on it. That's good. And let's just make sure that it does work. Well, it seems like it works okay. I'm off the line voltage there, so it's measuring 121.9122. So it's working, the BPD beep works on it. Makes nice noise. So good. So I am glad that it did not get destroyed. I've had this meter for a very, very long time now. I actually have ordered a new volt ohm meter one that's uh, a little bit more uh, i want to say sophisticated but it's just got a lot more features than this one here and so yeah we'll get that one we'll get this all uh, buttoned back up here just like that good as new all that battery corrosion stuff is off of it there might be just a little piece here or there but i think it's pretty good though so yeah, so this has been very successful. I'm glad I was able to save it. Only thing I wish I could do to try to polish this uh, screen up a little bit here, all the all the uh, numbers and stuff on the back here at the bottom, that's all on the back side of it. I'll see if I can polish that up a little bit. Maybe make that look a little better. So yeah, so I'm glad that uh, I like that. And while I'm out here, I just better check my uh, component tester here. 
So this is my uh, component tester. Uh, I did a review on this a while back. Uh, you can check that. I'll put a link in the video on this. But I uh, fixed it to where um, the battery's on the inside here, nine volt. And also, you can still use the uh, external adapter on it too. I had to modify this case a little bit because of getting to some of the uh, surface mounted component pads. You couldn't get that. Uh, I basically took this top cover off and I elongated it so that way we can move the switch, put all the components in there, and have more access to people that have big fingers like me. And that way you can get in it before I didn't have that. So as you can see, it looks pretty doggone good. It looks like it came that way. And uh, this nice, nice little gadget. I, I found out about this from uh, Bruce uh, Brankus uh, Creations. Uh, check his channel out. He does awesome, awesome repairs on boards, uh, even on a prototype uh, boards that he's getting from uh, Kai that's uh, engineered like for the uh, Mac Classic 2 and the Mac SE. Pretty interesting. But this is just a very handy little thing to have. I actually use this quite a, quite a bit. So if you have unknown values on components, you can put them on this thing. It'll ID it. It'll tell you what it is. And it's pretty accurate. Uh, I mean, it's definitely close enough to to, to do things because you know some of these things all the little silk screen that they put on the uh, outside of the components to identify it kind of get worn off in time and this is just a nice way of uh, being able to identify them so yeah guys so hey uh, thanks for uh, watching the video here I'm glad I was able to save my uh, vintage Radio Shack volt ohm meter and you know I'm trying to remember how much I paid for this, $24 or $39 for it back in the day. Uh, and I bet I could probably find one of these new on eBay, uh, probably still in the box. But it's the Radio Shack, it's the 22-163 Auto Range Digital Multimeter. And it's got a lot of, uh, it goes up pretty high, up to 4,000 volts. You can get unfused and fused. Obviously the fuses are good because it's working, but yeah. So, all right guys, so hey, thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button, click the bell. And we're also on MeWe and Twitter. Check us out there. And on that note, you guys have a great rest of your weekend. Love your family, be safe. I'll see you in the next video, bye.